Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, and thank you so much for coming to this service of thanksgiving for the life of Betty Sterrett. We gather together this afternoon to give thanks to God for Betty's life. We gather to remember her with thanksgiving in our hearts, and we gather to hear of the hope that was Betty's. For Betty was a Christian. So death for Betty is not the end. For Betty, to live was Christ, and to die is gain. When we speak of this time as a service of thanksgiving, we really mean this. We want this to be a time of thanksgiving because Betty was blessed with a long, full, and fruitful life, 94 years of God's faithful provision and care. When we reflect on her life, there is so much to be thankful for. Betty loved and appreciated her family. She was a wife to Tommy for 70 years, a mother to her children, David and Carol, a mother-in-law to David, grandmother to Joanne and Mark, grandmother-in-law to Connor and grandmother-in-law in waiting to Amy. It's a great grandmother to Grace, Joshua and Zoe. And I'm sure you know this, but she loved and appreciated you all so much. As well as loving her family, Betty also loved her great Vic family. She became a member of this church in 1946, so a member here for over 75 years. I've had lovely visits with both Tommy and Betty uh, down uh, through the past six years where I've been here uh, as a pastor. They've always been just so encouraging. Both Tommy and Betty have just been full of positivity full of hopefulness despite the challenges that come with racking up so many birthdays. Betty will be missed. And on behalf of my wife, Lindsay, and I and our whole Great Vic family, we wish you all as a family our deepest sympathy and we're praying for you. We grieve when those we love pass on before us. But when those who pass on before us are Christians, we know that we do not grieve as those who do not have hope. For though Betty is absent from the body that was led to rest earlier this morning out at Ballylesson Cemetery, she is now present with the Lord, more alive than ever. At a time of real grief, the author of the Book of Lamentations wrote of the pain he was feeling. Yet he also spoke of the hope that he found in the Lord. In Lamentations 3.21, we read these words, But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Betty was loved by the Lord with an everlasting love. And those are the words that we're going to sing now in our first hymn, Loved with Everlasting Love. So let's stand together and sing.
please do be seated. And our assistant pastor uh, here at Great Vic, Simon Farewell, is going to come now and lead us in prayer. Thanks, Simon. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we gather together this afternoon, we do again want to come and give you thanks. Give you thanks for Betty. Give you thanks for all that she has been and has meant to so many who are here today. Lord, we thank you again for Betty's faith in you. And we rejoice that now, at this moment, her faith has turned to sight. And she is with you. And she will be with you forever. We thank you for Jesus' words that continue to give us hope in these days. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Father, we rejoice at that truth. And Father, though we do rejoice at knowing that truth, that Betty is more alive now than ever and is with you, this, of course, doesn't mean that we don't feel the sadness at this moment, too, of her going to be with you for those of us who are still here. In that way, we want to pray particularly for Tommy again this afternoon. Lord, we thank you for his and Betty's 70 years of marriage together. And we thank you for Tommy's steadfast love and care for Betty that he showed over those years. And we pray now that you will be a continued source of comfort and hope for Tommy in the days, weeks, and months ahead. May he know your love, your strength, and your ongoing care for him in these days. And may you continue to be a rock of refuge for him to run to. And as we pray for Tommy, we think also of David and David and Carol, Lord, as they grieve. Please would you be that very present help for them in these days. May they know your continued goodness and steadfast love surrounding them. We think also of the wider family, thinking particularly of Joanne and Connor, Grace, Joshua and Zoe, and of Mark and Amy. Lord, we lift them before you, asking that you, the God of all comfort, would be to them all that they need in the days ahead. Lord, in this time of grieving for Betty, we thank you that you are a personal God who knows each and every one of us here. You are the one who made each of us and you know, Lord, how we are feeling. You see our tears and our sadness and our laughter and our joys too. Please, Father, be gracious and merciful towards us, however we are feeling at this moment. We thank you that we know that you our God, never change. You are always the same. And so we just continue to look to you, that unshifting rock of stability and hope in our lives. Lord, continue to be with us, near to us, as we continue to remember Betty and give thanks for her life in our service together now. Please, would each of us here know that very real comfort and love that Christ brings. We pray all of this in the precious name of Christ, the one who has given new life to Betty and who gives new life to all who will come to him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Simon. Now, uh, Betty's daughter, Carl, is going to come and pay tribute to her mum. Thanks, Carl. Mum was born on the 28th of July, 1928. She was born to the parents Sammy and Lily Parr. I'll not give them their proper names, Sammy and Levin. (laughs) 
Um, she was the eldest of um, the family. She had two sisters and a brother. Uh, there was Edith and Samuel and the late Barbara. Tommy Sterrett, as it was mentioned earlier, first began attending Great Vic in 1945 and Mum in 1946. They met as part of the then youth group and after coming into membership, they married on the 24th of March, 1953. And we're very blessed that a couple of weeks ago celebrated their 70th wedding anniversary. It was through Christ, church that they met and church remained throughout their years together. It was a huge part of their lives and it was only in later years that for health reasons they couldn't attend in person. But always they were in spirit and remained part of the Great Vic family. Dad loved getting all the information and everything that was sent out to him. And thank you to Ruth and Gillian and others who are involved in all of that. Mum loved the Lord. She was involved in the BWF, which was then known as the Baptist Woman's Fellowship. She led a ladies' Bible study group. She supported Dad in all his activities within the church. He was a leader of the junior CE, a member of the choir, a leader, a chief in the campaigners, and as a deacon. As much as she loved and supported Tommy and the work of the Lord, my mum loved her family. Paul was the eldest, Carol and David. With her strong faith, mum displayed a lovely example to all of us of her walk with God, especially through Paul's illness. Paul at 15 was diagnosed with terminal cancer. But during those next three years, with all the practicality of a mother's love and the strength from God, she sustained us all. In due course, she was blessed with her grandchildren, Joanne and Mark, and who threw out and remain a great source of joy to her. And they have been left with many happy memories of fun and loving Nanny. They could tell some stories. Both mum and dad spent many, many happy years and outings on bus tour holidays and through the ups and downs of life, they watched their grandchildren growing up to be adults. And then later they were doubly blessed to see and spend time with her great three grandchildren. Grace, who is nearly 16, Josh, who's 13, and Zoe, who soon be 10. Sadly, mum took Alzheimer's about eight years ago. And for many of those years, she was able to hide it. And even in the later stage, there were many occasions when she was just her old self. She was in her own home with carers coming in and dad coped 24 seven marvelously well looking after her. Sadly, last February, mum's Alzheimer's deteriorated and she needed extra care. Mum went into Nicholson House, which is in Lisburn. There she was very well looked after by all the staff. We as a family are very grateful to the staff who gave her such care and attention. They were marvelous, thank you. Mum was blessed. We were blessed having her for 94 years. She is now at peace. We thank you all so much for coming today, for Steve doing all he's doing, for Lila on the piano, for Andrew and the Crimble team. They've just been so marvellous. For Isabel and the catering. And please do come up and speak to Dad because he's, he's not able to go down and join us. Thank you. Thanks so much, Carl, for those just wonderful words. Um, you've honoured your mum well in paying tribute to her. And also what a tribute it is just in the number of people here today uh, who have been blessed and encouraged. We're going to hear from God's word now. We're going to have two readings, Psalm 46 and John 14. Uh, Joanne 
uh, Betty's granddaughter and Grace, Betty's great-granddaughter, are going to come and read those passages for us. Thanks. Psalm 46, God, the refuge of his people and conqueror of the nations. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. There is a river whose stream shall make the glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. John 14, verses 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Thanks for reading those passages, Joanne and Grace. Well, just before we come to reflect on those words, we're going to sing again of the hope of that day when Christ returns and his people will see him. Let's stand and sing together.
I dropped in to see Betty the day before she went home to be with the Lord. And the last passage from the Bible that I read with Betty was Psalm 46, the psalm that Joanne just read for us. I read it with Betty and with Carol there also because it's a psalm to give us comfort and reassurance when we're going through a hard time. The great 16th century reformer Martin Luther held the 46th Psalm as his favorite. And at times of real trial and weakness, he would say to one of his friends, Philip Melanchthon, come Philip, let us sing together the 46th Psalm. Psalm 46 gives us a vision of our big God to steady us when we feel like the ground underneath us is giving way. It's a vision of the stability of God in an unstable world. And we all need this vision of God in front of us. In fact, what each of us need today more than anything else is a bigger vision of the God who is with us. This psalm presents us with three images to help us grasp who God is and how He is with us to help us in our affliction. Image number one. He is for us a strong, stabilizing fortress. Verse one. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. In recent days, we've heard of the devastation in certain parts of Central America due to tornadoes. My family, we lived in Illinois for a couple of years, and I remember at times having to run down into tornado shelters when an alarm would go off and you'd go down into this shelter where you'd be safe until the storm would pass over. The psalmist here is engaging this kind of image to help us understand that this is who our God is, a place of shelter in the storms of life a refuge, a place where we can be secure and strong. Notice the psalmist doesn't just recognize God as his protector, but God is also a very present help. The psalmist speaks of the Lord as his refuge and strength, but also his very present help in times of trouble. And there is so much sweetness in that truth. God is with His people to help them in their affliction. And notice He's not just a present help in times of trouble, but a very present help in times of trouble. Totally engaged. Sometimes my children are talking to me and perhaps I'm distracted because I'm scrolling on my phone at something or other and they're like, Daddy, because I'm half giving them my attention and I'm half my attention elsewhere. Well, the psalmist here is saying it's not like that with God. In the midst of our tribulations and our affliction, he's not a sort of half in, half out help. He's a very present, fully present help with his people in their tribulation. Because of that, in verse 2, we read, Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth gives way, though the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. Those word pictures in this poetic psalm are vivid. It's a picture of the earth falling out of orbit. The big solid mountains, like the morns, tumbling into the sea. The sea roaring like a lion and the mountains shaking with fear. 
There's an emphasis here in the psalm on the sea because the sea in ancient thought represented chaos, disorder, and death. In a sense, the psalmist is saying here in Psalm 46, if all chaos is breaking out to a point where you feel your world is falling apart, you don't have to be afraid. Why? Because God is with you as your refuge and strength. Betty knew the Lord as her refuge and strength. In all the ups and downs of her life, I remember when she was a little more clear in thought, she would say, where would we be without the Lord? In all of her own afflictions, she knew the Lord as her refuge and strength. And I want to encourage you today, Tommy, and the whole family circle, this is true for you. God is here as a refuge and a strength, not just a present help, but a very present help in the midst of your trouble. And I want to lift my eyes to each of us this afternoon and just ask this simple question. Do you know God in that way? Do you have this reliable rock of refuge where you can find shelter in the storms of life and the ultimate storm of death? This, this first image is here to give us stability whenever we feel like so much is falling away underneath us. God is our refuge and strength. The second image then in the psalm is of God as a sovereign king who can never be overthrown. In verse 4 we read, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Notice how the picture changes in the psalm from the chaotic waters of the first few verses to now this lovely river that is channeled and controlled to serve God's purposes. God is present with his people as a king ruling over his city with his people. He's always present to protect and care for his people. And because of this reality, we are to have this sense of security. There is such a lovely line there, because God is in the midst of her, that is, in his city with his people, she shall not be moved. Nothing can destabilize this sovereign king. In verse 6, we're told of certain influences that seek to make God's people afraid. Nations raging, intimidation applied, death growling at us. And yet God lifts his voice. He speaks, and the storms of anxiety and fear are stilled. And then in verse 7, we read this refrain. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Notice the titles given to God here. The Lord Almighty, speaking of God's power and strength. This is the God who is with us. The God of Jacob. This is the term in the Psalms that speaks of God's protective care for the weak. That little title, the God of Jacob, occurs six times in the Psalms. In every case, it is about God's protective care for his weak people. It's easy in the midst of death and grief to feel intimidated and overwhelmed. Again, Tommy and the whole Sterrett family circle call to mind that this God is your God in the midst of your afflictions. Not just a refuge and strength, but the God who is your sovereign king who can never be overthrown. Again, let's ask ourselves the question, 
Do you know God in that way? The third image then, finally, in the psalm speaks of God being with us as a strong defender when we feel like we're under attack. Verses 8 and 9 in the psalm give us a vision of God bringing an end to all that shatters his people's peace. The last picture in the psalm gives us a picture of God as a mighty warrior fighting to liberate his people from all that troubles them. And in the midst of this part of the vision, we read these words in verse 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Our daughter, Grace, who's now seven, used to have a pet hamster named Fluffy. And in Fluffy's little cage, there was one of those little hamster wheels. And when we Fluffy got on that wheel and started running, his wee legs went 10 to the dozen. It was like a blur in the cage. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I find life, or more specifically, my mind can feel a wee bit like Fluffy on that wheel. Thoughts race round and round. A conversation that's kind of half-formed with worries and concerns can just spin round and round, and there can be so little room sometimes just to slow down and reflect on things. Well, this psalm and this verse, Psalm 46, verse 10, invites us to slow down for a moment, to just step back from our crazy, busy, non-stop lives, and to just ponder the majesty of God. The God who is our strong refuge. The God who is our sovereign king. And the God who is our defender. This psalm invites us to slow down, to be still, and to know that this God is God. Betty knew God in this way. Do you know God in this way? In the second passage that we read earlier from John 14, Jesus told us how we can come to know God in this way. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The way to know God as your refuge, to know God as your strong king, to know God as your strong defender, the way to know this God is by trusting in Jesus Christ. God is a fortress for us when we trust in Christ, who is called the cornerstone. God is our sovereign king as we come to Jesus and rest in him. God is a strong defender for us as we come to Jesus, the one who himself vanquished all the real foes of sin and death. It's very nearly Easter. This special Sunday where we remember Jesus' death and resurrection. Jesus Christ, the one who loved us and gave himself for us. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, death is not a dead end for God's people. Jesus has gone through death, defeated sin and death, and now he stands with death defeated under his feet, inviting any who will come to come to him for rest, peace, eternal life. What an incredible hope. Death will never have the last word for the people of God. Jesus says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This invitation to know God's rest stands for each of us this afternoon. 
This is the rest that Betty knew and enjoyed. Because of that rest, she said, where would we be without the Lord? That's a good question for us to reflect on as we close. For Betty would want you to know the hope that she enjoyed. Do you know God as your refuge and strength, your strong and sovereign king, your defender when under attack, the one who can give you life even through death? Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for the hope that this psalm leads us to. For this psalm points us to you, a strong God, and to our Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the way into you as our refuge and strength. If we do not have Jesus, we cannot know you in that way. Thank you, Father, for Betty's hope in Jesus. Thank you that through her life, through her encouragements, and through her griefs, thank you that she could always turn to you as that refuge and strength, that very present help in trouble. And thank you, Lord, that Tommy and the whole family circle today, and this group of friends and family members gathered with them, thank you that anyone who hopes in Jesus can turn and find this refuge and strength and this hope. Father, we're nearly on the Easter weekend. Good Friday, where we will remember the death of Jesus. And Easter Sunday, where we will in that special way remember the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Because of that hope, he's the one who says, I am the resurrection and the life. And he said that the one who believes in him, even though they would die, they would live on because the life that Jesus gives his people can never be touched by death. So though Betty has died and we have led her to rest, we know that Betty's soul has gone to be with you, Lord. And that life that Jesus has given her, that new life in Christ, It lives on, and Betty lives on more alive than ever. Thank you for that hope. And we just pray that each of us would know and enjoy and be comforted by that hope today. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to close now with the words of our final hymn, Man of Sorrows. What a name. Let's stand together and sing.
Let's pray. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated. And as you're seated, uh, may I, on behalf uh, of Tommy and the whole family, just express their thanksgiving uh, for you being present today. And also just explain um, our refreshments will be served at the back. So just in your own time, uh, you can make your way uh, to the back and starting from the left, working round to the right, you'll be able to get some food and then just find a space where you can enjoy it. Uh, and of course, do uh, take the opportunity to speak to Tommy uh, and encourage the family as well. Thank you so much for coming.